94 WIP breaking news. Uh, according to Ian Rappaport, the Eagles just paid Devontae Smith three-year extension, $75 million contract, uh, $51 million guaranteed. So. There you go. Devontae. Congratulations. Devontae Smith, the owner of a, what, $25 million a year contract. So that puts him about on par with AJ as far as uh, average annual value, I guess, right? I think and... AJ's was four-year 100. So this means the Eagles yeah. are paying a ton of money. A lot of money. To the yeah. receivers. receivers. Yeah, and, and not only that, you know, you talk about a young man who when you look at it, as far as being able to get another bite at the apple, he's gonna get he's gonna get a lot of make a lot of money in the NFL if he keeps on this trajectory that he's on. Oh, as yeah. far as making making that bread, it's and, and I mean, a nice little pay bump. Yeah, and let's face it, this was a certainty. Like the way Howie was talking about it at the at the combine, they're not in the business of letting good young players walk out the door. So I'm happy with that move. I mean, Devontae Smith is uh, you talk about first round picks that have worked out very well. Yeah, he's and, one of them. I mean, that was a, a, a tremendous pick. And so. that's why I keep saying, that's why, you know, it's funny. And, and you know, like, like me and the guys, we always keep in touch with, with each other over the weekend with certain things that are happening and whatnot. So I sent them a, a video that nobody responded to, by the way, Kyle, of Warren Sapp talking about how defenses don't mean that much this week, that, that, that much anymore. It's you pay your $100 million quarterback to go out there and win for you. It's the truth, man. And that's like when you talk about as much money or resources that we've allocated to the offensive side of the ball, everything that I'm saying right now rings true. They they better be a top three scoring <laughs> yes. team, Hugh. It, this is going to be everything that, that we're doing, especially if we come back and we draft, say, another receiver high with the uh, first or second pick. Every it validates everything that I've been saying this whole time that I've been back here in Philadelphia. People, is that defense is a luxury, not a necessity. Well, that's going to be put to the test this year. <laughs> yes, it because is. This defense does not look very good. Yes, it is. And Hugh, you look at the amount of money they've invested in these position players now. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith. You combine those guys are making what N- near uh, over the course of their deals, two hundred million dollars. Two hundred million dollars. Yeah. Then you, uh, you factor in Saquon. Saquon is who, by the way, is the only cat, and I'm just being petty by saying this, that Jalen seems like he's been working out with, the squat brothers. <laughs> the squat brothers have been getting it in. It just leads me to believe that, like, even though we paid all these receivers a lot of money, Saquon's going to factor in huge to this, to this offense. Well, they better score a lot of points. So the Eagles end up locking up Devontae Smith, three years, $75 million. That's added on to the next two years of his deal. They also exercise that fi- fifth-year option. So he's under contract through 2028 at this point. So good news, Devontae Smith back. But, man, the Eagles are going to need to score a lot of points. So you want to get on the Devontae Smith conversation as he has uh, been locked up long term. You're welcome to. So uh, just another detail to this. I guess they exercised his fifth-year option. Yes. And then and then extended him a couple more years after that. So through 2028. Yep. Yeah. So uh, Devontae under contract for a long time here. And uh, very good news for the Eagles as far as retaining a young player, keeping good players in the building. Um, and they're going to need to score a lot of points. I think they need to be a top three offense with how much they've invested at those positions. 215-592-9494. But um, did want to get back to the Sixers here because uh, it's a huge game Wednesday night now, Hugh, as they have a play-in game with the Heat. The way this is going to work. Jimmy Buckets. If they win the game, they're the seven seed. They get to play the Knicks in the first round. And if you're able to beat the Knicks, you play the winner of the Milwaukee and Indiana series. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good route in yeah. the postseason. Yeah, the Knicks, the Knicks are surprisingly pretty good this year. I, I thought with Julius Randle being out that they were going to be one of those teams that, that fall by the wayside. But no, they're a pretty good squad. Nova North. Yeah. Yeah, it's just all those Villanova guys up there. So that wouldn't be a bad route. Now, if the Sixers lose this game, they would need to play the Celtics in the first round if they win the – game against the 9-10 winner, that's the Bulls and the Hawks, or if they were to lose that game, be out of the playoffs completely. Hugh, this is a massive game on Wednesday night. Like, if they want any chance to make a deep run, I think they need to beat Miami. Yeah, I think they do too, and, and the thing about it is, they, I think the last time that these two teams met, that was the reason why we got the game here, as opposed to Miami. I look at it like this, two good coaches playing against Jimmy Buckets, and we know what Jimmy has been in the playoffs. He's a monster. And it also rings true about something that I think Shaq said last week when he was talking about the, the Sixers have to see the Miami Heat. Now, I think that they could beat the Heat, but it's going to be an intense game, no question about that. Coming back to town, knowing, knowing Jimmy Butler and, and probably knowing that he's going to have that chip on his shoulder about 
how we made the decision for 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 Ben Ben Simmons as opposed to him, yeah, it's gonna be a really good game. Yeah, and I'm not gonna lie. Like I look at this game, the Sixers should win. The Sixers have shown this year that when Joel Embiid is on the floor, they're better than the Heat, and they beat them twice in the last couple weeks here. The Sixers should win this game. But I got to say, Hugh, I'm nervous. I'm terrified for this game because I believe in the whole heat culture thing they do down there. They always win these kind of games. And this is the thing. Even though the Sixers are better this year and should win, one of these teams always seems to win these kind of games. One of these teams always seems to lose these kind of games. I can't, in good faith, feel good about this matchup considering it's Jimmy Butler and the Heat. You know what's funny? I I'm going to say something, and, it, and I know for a fact if I was here, if Joe was here, he would have issue, take issue with what I say. And I understand that this player is basically up and down for the most part. He's been up and down all year long. But I just got a feeling. Kelly Oubre might factor in big to this game. Well, I hope so. Yeah, because, oh. you know, you, we talk about that third guy that we don't have. I think I like the fact, I like the growth of Tyreek's Maxi. Hell, I'd even throw Tobias, Tobias Harris oh, in there a little bit. Not, well, I mean, it's not to be a huge fact. I, I would take, I would take uh, Kelly Oubre over that, but still. I think that that bench is going to help out a lot, and I think Kelly Uber is going to be that guy that can come in and do some things for you. And that leads us to our Twitter question of the day here. Twitter question sponsored by PI Dental Center. Your smile is the first thing that others see when they meet you. Learn about and schedule your evaluation at PIDentalCenter.com. And our Twitter question of the day today, uh, at WIP Midday Show on Twitter, uh, regarding that Sixers game on Wednesday night, which are you feeling more heading into Wednesday's, Wednesday's play-in versus Miami, confident or nervous? I will say nervous, and if I could add a third option, Hugh, I'd say terrified. I'm terrified about this. Definitely about not this terrified. Game. Definitely not terrified. But I, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from because Jimmy, in the playoffs, boy, he's a different animal. Playoff Jimmy's different. He really, really is. Yeah. yeah. And he's been, he's been, you talk about the time bubble Jimmy, uh, playoff last year Jimmy, how big he was. He's that dude, but I think that a uh, healthy Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey's coming into his own. And like I said, Kelly Oubre, I think that we have enough to get the heat. And uh, I hope so. Kyle, what's your feelings on this going into Wednesday night? Sixers heat. Do you fear heat culture as much as I do, no. or do you feel good about this? No, I, I feel good about this. We, we have the best player on the floor, Joel Embiid. I know playoff Jimmy is a thing. This is playing Jimmy, though. This is a different – no, I'm just kidding. It's, uh, Jimmy Butler in the playoffs, he's a little bit scary, but like – the Sixers are a better team than the Heat. I, I understand Eric Spolster is a great coach. Great coach. But I think with Embiid and Maxi on the floor, like we are the better team. So I'm not nervous about you playing. You don't like Kelly? You don't like my uh, third guy, the third option, Kelly Uber? Absolutely at all? not, Hugh. No. I just have this fear of that that <laughs> annoying Duncan Robinson hitting like eight threes on Wednesday night or something. The Sixers losing this game. I. I don't think they're going to beat the Heat on Wednesday. Really? I just don't. I don't. I don't think it happens. Oh, TK, man. I'm hitting the panic button. Oh, we're in the panic button on the Sixers already. I'm, I'm hitting the panic button on the Sixers. Gotcha. Okay. There you go. And part of uh, the reason why I'm uh, nervous about this game, terrified about this game, Joel Embiid. Now he didn't play yesterday. Tweaked the knee when or Friday night. Here's yeah, when, when he, he failed. Right when he had a, a little, didn't he have a little tumble? Kind of came down awkwardly. Yeah. Uh, went right back to the locker room, but came back in, played the rest of that game, didn't play yesterday. Here was Nick Durse on Joel's status going into Wednesday. How much of a concern is Joel's need moving forward, especially now that you've Yeah, I mean, listen, he, he did everything at practice yesterday. Um, we just decided out of caution to hold him out. He'll be ready to go. Yeah, he'll be fine. So that's a good sign that, that Joel should be ready to go for Wednesday night. Here was more from uh, Coach Nurse talking about the mindset of the team going into this game. What's your mindset uh, going into this game Wednesday against Miami? Well, um, obviously, um, we've had some great battles with them, Tim. I, I think it's um, always expect that versus them, right? Um, mindset is we want to keep playing well and got to put everything we can into it. It's like, um, you know, kind of the way we've been treating the last – Month of the year, we've been we've been digging in and playing, playing and playing our guys as whatever we have to and doing whatever we got to do to to win. And we've we've got a good mindset, I think, and just take that into Wednesday. And I, I think they should be confident, Hugh. I mean, they went down to Miami with and took care of the business. Yeah, with one Jimmy playing, four. with Joel playing, they won a, a, a couple weeks ago. Won a game about a month ago. Here, no Jimmy Butler for the Heat, no Joel Embiid for the Sixers. So I agree, they should win this game. 
for me, it's just the the memories of the past playoffs that I can't get over. Yeah, and and that's fair because there's been times when we've been in this position where Joel has not been as healthy as he is now, and I know there's probably some concern with the fact that his knees a little tweaked. I just feel like this the atmosphere for this team is a lot different. The the uh, the the camaraderie is a lot different. I think it has a little bit more attitude now. I know that a lot of people probably would say, you know, attitude don't match athleticism. But I think, you know, with the guys that you have, you have enough to beat the Heat. I, I really, really do. And I think it's going to be one of those sound victories that they're going to have. It's not going to be one that, that comes down to the wire. It's going to be, you know, they're going to kick the Heat's butt. Well, that would be huge. I mean, I think, Hugh, if they win this game, I think they go to the Eastern Conference Finals with the path they have. I think they beat the Knicks. The Knicks don't have anybody who can guard Embiid. The Bucks stink, and they got Doc Rivers. If you end up playing them in the next round or Indiana, I think they beat either of those teams. So, it's a, it's a massive game. You don't want to play the Celtics, uh, so hopefully Sixers can take care of business. But want to know, are you more confident or nervous in the playing game at home Wednesday night versus the Heat? 215-592-9494. And also, as we uh, reported this segment, the breaking news, Devontae Smith. Got paid. Three-year, $75 million dollar extension. Do the Eagles need to be a top three offense this year? Oh, we'll no question. Throw that out there. Absolutely. Yeah, they got it. Like insane. they put, they've allocated a lot of resources. This is on the quarterback, though. I mean, let's not get it twisted. They believe in Jalen Hurts. They they put him in position by going out and getting him weapons to uh, basically say, "Hey, man, it's on you. If he doesn't get it done, then we will be in the market for another quarterback." Yeah, I mean, there's so much pressure on him this year, and it's interesting, Hugh, because. I feel like they're treating this so much differently than they did with Carson Wentz. Because remember with Wentz, he wasn't playing well really in 18, 19, and 20. But at the same time, we were asking the question, oh, well, is it because it, it might be his receivers? It might be that he doesn't have the weapons. They're not giving Jalen that excuse. They're no. giving him every possible weapon, and it's sink or swim for him this year. Yeah, no question about that, man. And I know a lot of people are looking at last year as a uh, – a, a, quest, a big question mark as far as what Jalen is. I think towards the beginning of the year, he was playing well. Down the stretch, not so much. I, I think that Jalen is trending closer to the guy that we saw at the beginning as opposed to the guy that we saw at the end. But the Eagles, are they, they've put weapons around him, so he has to get it done. He's going to be the guy that however this plays out, if it's the defense or whatever, he's going to get most of the heat because he they have enough to win with. When you talk about – the dearth of weapons that they have on that side of the ball, you can't you can't tell me that there's any other team, as far as weapons are concerned, that can match up with them as far as the playmakers. Not even the San Francisco 49ers. So, yeah, it's on Jalen. Going to need to win a lot of games, 31-28, 34-31. It might be. 